tributes have been paid to a great Yarmouth-born soldier who was killed in Afghanistan this week. Trooper James Leverett died when his vehicle was struck by a roadside bomb on Monday. The 20-year-old was due to become a father. Today, his comrades in the Royal Dragoon Guard said he was a model soldier. Norfolk County Council is facing prosecution for health and safety breaches following the death of a teenager two years ago at Whitlingham Broad near Norwich. 15-year-old Zabula Asadi, known as Zabi, died as he swam beyond the designated area at Little Broad. Today, the council have issued a statement sending their sorrow and sympathy to Zabi's family. The area has since been closed to swimmers. Now, the ornate winter gardens in Great Yarmouth, a medieval priory in Suffolk and a string of churches are all in desperate need of repair, according to English Heritage. The conservation body today added nine buildings in the east to their at-risk register. It's hoped by highlighting their plight, it will help secure funding to rescue them from ruin. Martin Stew has more. 15th century architecture battered by modern-day elements. St Mary's at Quay is one of nine buildings in the east, which has been added to the Heritage at Risk list. This is a marvellous church. It's got the oldest double hammer beam roof anywhere in any church. Uh, it's 1450. It's got wonderful carved um, figures up in the spandrels of the double hammer beam roof. The list is compiled by English Heritage every year to highlight areas which need saving. One of every 32 listed buildings in the east of England is now on the at-risk register, including Stevens Mill here in Burwell. It was built in the 19th century, but as it no longer spins in the wind, it's become increasingly susceptible to rainwater and to stormy winds. Other buildings newly at risk include, in Norfolk, the Winter Gardens in Great Yarmouth, and four churches, All Saints in Corpusty, St Michael Coslaney in Norwich, the ruins of St Peter's in Wigan Hall St Germans, and All Saints in Cockthorpe. In Suffolk, as well as St Mary's at Quay, South Elmham Gatehouse and Blytheborough Priory are also at risk. The medieval Augustinian Priory has been badly damaged by ivy and rabbits, but conservation work is starting next month. As well as buildings, 4% of our conservation areas and 12% of our monuments have also been branded at risk. Is this a case of sort of naming and shaming people into action? No, not at all. Quite the opposite, in fact. Um, it's a very, very useful exercise in finding out what's out there and where the problems are. And more importantly, we tend to direct our grant aid to support those properties that are at the highest risk. Last year, English Heritage handed out over a million pounds of grants in the East, helping nine buildings remove themselves from the risk list. St Mary's, Blytheborough Primary, Stevens Mill and the rest will all be hoping for the same this year. Martin Stew, Anglia News, Burwell. Now some very sad news for you because one of the region's best known broadcasters has died after a long illness. Roy Waller worked for BBC Radio Norfolk as a presenter and commentator on Norwich City football matches. He was 69. After being diagnosed with bowel cancer five years ago, he campaigned to make people more aware of the condition. Today, a book of condolences was opened while former colleagues fielded hundreds of calls from listeners. He just crossed any age group, any boundaries, any social boundaries. If you liked Roy, you liked Roy. And people would tune in with a passion to hear what daft thing he was going to do next. It's left a huge gap. Um, of course, people have filled the gap. They do in broadcasting, it carries on, but there won't be another Roy Waller. Hundreds of school children from Norfolk have been getting their first taste of playing in an orchestra. They were accompanied by members of the Britain Sinfonia for a performance at St Andrew's Hall in Norwich with the aim of getting them interested in music for life. Jim Rice has more. How do you get 400 school children to keep quiet for a moment? The answer, it seems, is to give them each a musical instrument. Over two days, seven to twelve-year-olds from 30 Norfolk schools are performing their own concert, with help from the Britain Sinfonia. Today, they were at St Andrew's Hall in Norwich. I'm Stacey, I'm from All Saints Stibber Primary School, and I play in Pine Finn today. My name's Bethany, and I go to First Side Junior School, and I play horn. I'm James Martell, I'm from Mungsen Junior School, and I play the violin. They'll probably seldom get the opportunity to play as part of a 450-strong orchestra, and to appreciate the very advanced players and the beginner players and to know that they've all contributed. We 
love performing here in St Andrews, but one of the things that we, we also really love is being able to engage fully with the community in Norfolk and particularly with young people. I think for us, we consider our role to be one of inspiration, inspiration for young people and inspiration for the whole community. So today is a, is a great day for us and a very important part of what we do. Tomorrow, Tim and his team will do it all again with a new group of children at the Corn Exchange in Kings Lynn. Jim Rice, Anglian News, Norwich. Yeah, fantastic stuff. Now, from the Great Wall of China to the Norfolk and Suffolk Broads, our region's wetland is competing to become a World Heritage Site. The Broads have already been recognised internationally as a site of beauty and historical interest. They're up against nearly 40 other areas in the UK. The Roman history of Colchester is also fighting for the title. Next tonight, the Norwich scientists at the centre of the so-called Climategate scandal have been told their honesty is no longer in question. The Climatic Research Unit at the University of East Anglia was at the centre of a scandal over leaked climate change data and had been the subject of not one, but three independent reviews. But today, the final review has found that the scientists there did not manipulate any data. Tom Barton reports. For months, it's threatened to crack open one of our top universities and the whole world of climate change science. But today came the verdict which appears to give scientists at the University of East Anglia the all clear. We find that their rigour and honesty as scientists are not in doubt. The Climatic Research Unit had achieved global prominence for its research into climate change, but in recent months it's found itself at the centre of an international scientific scandal. A potentially major scandal is unfolding after someone released thousands of emails and documents sent between prominent scientists of global warming debate. Last November, more than a thousand emails were stolen from the unit and leaked, leading to allegations that the scientists had manipulated data to support the theory of man-made global warming. Today, the third of three reports was published into the affair. Two previous ones had exonerated the scientists, and this appeared to also do so, ruling that their rigour and honesty is not in doubt. But it raised questions about the university's management and said that the scientists could have been more open. They began to get into, uh, uh, I suppose, a, a somewhat defensive position where it became uh, the instinctive reaction to say, no, we will not, uh, we don't need to give that, rather than yes, yes, we will. And I think that that was what led, in a sense, to the, the pressures that, 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 that they came under. So after months of work by a team of top academics, the third and final report has finally been published here at one of the homes of British science, the Royal Institution. This report runs to 160 pages. The emails it concerns run to more than 3,300. It's still not known who stole these emails, emails which raised questions and criticism about how the unit operated. I asked the university's vice chancellor if it had affected the UEA's reputation. I'm uncertain that we will find in the long term, and universities are for the long term, that it has damaged the reputation. There's been turbulence, but all the sort of indicators I watch very closely, the level of student applications, they have absolutely shot up in the last year. The quality of the new academics we're appointing, the best we've ever appointed. Concerns about climate change from research like that carried out at the Climatic Research Unit have led to massive investment in wind power in our region. This scandal has affected that international debate, as well as the university's reputation. Senior academics there hope that today's report means that they can put this episode behind them. Tom Barton, Anglia News, Central London. Well, like the bait.